Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the real grade Gundam Astraea Type F. So as usual, when it comes to a box of monochromatic color like this one right here, the Astraea Type F is P Bandai only, so this video right here would not have been possible without those fantastic people over at Baiyi. So if you want one of these of your own, I'll throw a link to them down in the description. So yeah, just to make a long story short about this particular kit, it's basically the real grade Exia with some alternate parts and some new colors. I will also mention this is available as well, but this I made a little bit of a mistake on. I thought this was a full kit. I obviously didn't read the description. It's actually just a part set. So it'll take me a while to get an Exia to actually put that on, so I will review that. It just won't be anytime soon. As for this right here though, it's pretty much a straight build with a little bit of panel lining, and I will mention there's some tiny parts in its head and some options to choose from on the body and the head as well. Let's check it out. So before we get into it, here's the real great Gundam Astraea Type F with absolutely everything that it comes with. It comes with a whole lot. Basically, we get everything we got with the real great Exia and stuff that we would have gotten with the real grade Astraea option set. So that is Exia's shield, Exia's GN sword, the GN blades, and then the four beam sabers to make up all of Exia's seven swords. If you're wondering why some are missing, well, that's because I attached one of them to the arm of this here Tau battle suit. Then on the other side, we've got the Astraea's shield, the Astraea's proto GN sword, the Astraea's launcher, and the Astraea's beam rifle. Lastly, then we've got a whole bunch of hands. We've got a bunch of alternate parts for changing this into the Astraea Type F2. Lastly, then we've got a bunch of adapters, but hey, let's check out the real grade Gundam Astraea itself. Jumping now into the aesthetics and starting off with that full 360 degree spin. And like I mentioned already, this is what it looks like out of the box with some panel lining and a couple of the stickers, which I'll talk about very, very soon. I'll also throw up the actual line art of this kit up on the right hand side so you can compare and contrast yourself. First off, I have to say this is a beautiful kit. All real grades are. Everything we'd like to see from a real grade is here. Great color separation, two tones of the main color, which is the red. We also have a kind of brownish red in there to break it all up. And the overall design of the Astraea is badass, undoubtedly. Compared to the line art, this is a little bulkier and stockier looking around the mid section, some wider shoulders, but otherwise looks phenomenal. There is detail upon detail upon detail on this. Of course, you can recognize the Exia inside of there, but the color change and all the new additional parts really do mask that Exia. I did not build this with the actual mask, which would mask it even more. I just built this as the standard Astraea Type F, but there is Astraea Type F2 as well as options for the head, which I'll talk about in the accessories. So anyway, there it is out of the box, snapped together once again with some panel lining, but besides that, this is straight built. There is everything you would expect to see on a double O real grade kit right here. We've got multiple shades of the red like I mentioned already. We've got some nice clear green all over the place. I will mention if you build this as the F2, all those hard points on the arms and legs, those will be GN condensers if you prefer that look. But as I built this as the F, I decided to actually repurpose those parts for a towel battle suit that's needed some love for a long, long time. As for the stickers in here, here is the sticker sheet. I did not use all of them, but I did use the main one up there in the shoulder because it's fitted to the spot. And I love those fitted to parts stickers. They look really good. And the silver ones up on the shoulders, as well as the ones underneath the wires that are prismatic and catch the light fantastically. These are hard to assemble. If you've ever built the real great Exia, they can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but they look pretty cool. Like I mentioned, there is two options for the head. Well, Technically, four options for the head. I'm not going to do these in the video, but I will show you the parts. So I'll pop it up on the screen right now. That is an alternate V-fin, which is not color accurate inside of the box, and a alternate mask style face. Now, I was really tossing up between this and the Exia looking face, but the white muzzle on this right here pops so well. We'll mention the eye sticker on this kit, and it's the same on the Exia. It's an absolute pain in the arse. I felt like I could only get one eye to be visible. It was driving me bananas. As for a couple of the negative aspects about this kit visually, this kit nubs up and nubs up bad and the real grade style inner frame that is inside of this shows some killer mold lines. And cleaning up the mold lines on the real grade inner frame is a little difficult because it's kind of rubbery. It's easy to scratch up, it can take a while to get it all off and the molds are incredibly prominent. So this kit will need a lot of cleanup and not the simplest kind of cleanup either. 
So yeah, without a single doubt, the Astraea Type F is an absolutely gorgeous kit and the real grade does do it justice, you will just have to do a little bit of extra cleanup yourself. I'm just hoping we get a Master Grade, Exia 2.0, and then a Master Grade of this beast. It needs to be done. So now jumping into some size comparisons, and there it is beside the High Grade Revive Grand Eddy Oryx 78 II, beside the Real Grade Exia, that is with the Exia Repair Parts, beside the Real Grade Gundam 00, then the Real Grade Gundam 00 Quanta. Doing a bit of a tour of the shelves now, and there it is beside some Build Divers and Build Divers Re-Rising High Grades, beside a multitude of Universal Century High Grades from big to small, with a few other main mobile suits from other Gundam series, and then down in the dirty Zaku shelf. Next up there it is side by side with the real grade new Gundam, the real grade Sazabi, the real grade Zeta Gundam, and the real grade Gundam Mark II. Finally, in case you're interested, there it is side by side with some uh, Warhammer miniatures. <laughs> Those being Space Marines. So anyway, jumping right on back to the begin of the review, and there's absolutely everything that comes with this kit, so let's jump through it all really, really quick. As for hands, we've seen the fist and the widespread open one already throughout this review, but we've got a pair of both of those. Next up then, here we've got the classic real grade poseable hands, that is one finger that can be moved separately from the other three, and a whole bunch of moving parts. As for the weapons we have in here, first off we've got the GN Sword from Exia, except this time of course it is in the Astraea Type F colors, and it does have that pretty cool chromed out blade. So there is a cool aspect about this particular GN sword, and it's something I always meant to try but never actually did, and that is, you can attach the shield onto the other side of this, thus making it into a left-handed version of the GN sword. I will mention the tab section for attaching into the hands is not on the correct side for doing this, but it still holds onto it fine. Attach into the forearm then, and it's rock solid, and honestly, this is pretty cool. So if you did get two Exeas or two Astrays, it can be dual-wielding too. G and swords, which are my favorite Gundam close combat weapon. Next up in here, we have the standard Exia shield. Now this can do a whole bunch of stuff around back. We've got multiple points in which to attach the part that attaches onto the forearm. And just like we would have seen with the GN sword, you can swap this around, flip it around, and then you can attach it onto the opposite arm to the usual Exia loadout. I will mention, however, it will not fit onto the standard version of the Astrea F because it has these little parts in the side of its arms, these hard points. If you build it as the F2, then you can attach it. If that wasn't cool enough already, we actually have the precursor to the GN sword in here, the Proto GN sword. And this doesn't attach on as, well, simply as the GN sword. We actually have a bunch of little kind of adapter type pieces. One plugs into the forearm, the other two are then a little bit of a support structure for holding it on, and that is what it looks like attached. Kind of like a smaller GN sword, it flips out in the exact same sort of way, but it does not have a shield or a beam rifle attached to it. But what we've got in the kit, well, that means that we can dual wield GN swords, which is awesome. So next up in here, we've got the GN beam rifle. So this has two different ways of attaching. The standard one is what we're seeing right here, and that'll attach directly into the forearm to get those juicy, juicy GN particles. But if you have the Proto GN sword attached like I do, you can actually pop this part off and attach on this alternate segment, which allows it to attach onto the arm while the Proto GN sword is there. So you can have both attached together like so and still be able to fully use that Proto GN sword. Pretty cool. So sadly now it's time to take off that GN sword, even though I love it so, so much because we're going to be trying the shield that comes with the Astrea. So this is pretty much just like Exia's shield, just a little bit smaller and with a little bit of extra grey from underneath showing through the upper segment. Just like with the other shield we saw, there is a movable attachment point in the back so you can shift it up and down by detaching and reattaching. And what you're seeing right now is it in its open form. You can actually close those gaps in the front just by disattaching the parts and reattaching them again closer in. So rounding off the Exia's seven swords that actually come with the Astrea right here. We also have the GN blades and the four beam sabers too long and too short, but we've seen these multiple times in other reviews, so if you want to see these in more detail, you can check out my older real great Exia review. As for this kit, they're exactly the same, just in a shade of red instead of white and blue. I will mention that the mounting point for the sabers is on the butt right here. These do not move like they do in the Exia, and there is none on the rear of the shoulders. And as for the GN blades, they can be mounted inside of the hips, or should I say on the hips, the mechanism inside of it, exactly the same. 
as the Exia, 100% identical. Next up in here, we've got the Astraea's biggest long-range weapon that comes in this box, and that, of course, is the GN Launcher. Now, this is one unique weapon. Sadly, we do have to take off that cool Proto-GN sword for this, but this attaches on in a very unique way. The sword isn't the only thing we have to remove. We also have to pop off one of the clavicle antennas. You can do either or, but the one in the instructions it shows is the right-hand one. Then the rear section of this weapon attaches onto that, and then you have to pop it into the hand. Now, this does mean when it is attached, there isn't a whole lot of posing opportunities because it is attached into the hand and into the clavicle at the same time. And the only real motion at that section that attaches into the clavicle is up and down. So we don't really get much of a choice as to which way this thing is pointing. But man, is it cool. And like I mentioned, you can put it on either side. So that means if you have two, you can do it with two. Do I have two? I think I might have two. Uh, yes, I have two, but I'll keep that for this particular Astrea review. So next up in here we have these, which are some of the parts for making this into the Astrea F2, which I'll pop up on the screen right now because I'm not gonna build it, mainly because I stole some of the parts, which are the GN condensers. So basically this is a little bit more towards Exia than it was from the Astrea. And then next up we got some alternate head parts. One is a bigger V-fin, which is actually meant to look like this, which has yellow sections up top, but we do not get yellow plastic in here, we get yellow color correcting stickers. Not very real grady, is it? So that's why I did not use this. So you may need some yellow paint. The other aspect is pretty cool, that is an alternate face. Once again, I'll pop this up on the screen if you want to see what that looks like. And that is a visored, big chinned mask version of the Astray. You do have to take apart the entire head in order to change this out, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt and why I'm not going to do it. And while taking some minimal shortcuts as well, I'm not going to do the articulation on this either because it's exactly the same as the Exia, which I would have looked at before. So the Exia has all right articulation, very good in general, but it is lacking a little bit at the ab crunch and the front skirting armors are awful and get in the way of any forward movement of the legs. But besides that, it is very nice, pose as well, just isn't really Exia level of, well, dynamic when it comes to the posing. But anyway, that right there is it for the review, and this to me, by definition, is a silver tier real grade. It's exactly what real grades were, and what I did expect of them when they came out like this. This, of course, would be prone to early real grade syndrome, because it does have that inner frame that does tend to loosen up over time. The only way you can really avoid this loosening up is by not moving it too much, which would relegate this to being a statue or something you post once or twice. Of course, if you're a lot more, uh... Innovative, you can come up with other solutions. Maybe if you take it all apart entirely and coat everything, paint everything, you might rescue it from that ERS, but, but as they say, prevention is better than cure. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, looks great, and honestly, who does not love the Red Astrea? So if you do want one of your own, I will throw a link down there in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more reviews, and I will see you next time. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. These videos would not be possible without you guys watching these videos. So thank you once again. And special thanks, of course, to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon and over on the channel memberships, including Van Fon, Tyler Sanders, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kugluk, Global Frequency Studios, Caleb Engelhart, Bakito Official, and Craig Jerry.